So this podcast is all about matter and you need to get your matter packet. If you don't have one, you need to come get one from me. And you need a different color pencil because you're gonna go through and you're going to do corrections on your answers. And that's how I'm gonna do this podcast right now is I'm gonna flip through and show you the worksheets with the answers on them. And it's not about if you get them right or wrong and, and show me a perfect sheet, it's knowing what you do and don't understand about this. So you're literally gonna take your work and you're gonna write the correct answers down. So if you're wrong, it's not a big deal. You need to figure out why. So here's the first worksheet. You're gonna pause this and look at it. So I'm gonna flip now to the next one. So pause it if you need, when, uh, and then continue this. Here's the next worksheet. Again, pause it, check your answers. Okay, I'm gonna keep flipping, but you're gonna pause it. And then here's the next worksheet. And again, you're gonna pause it, but then you're gonna keep playing this after you pause it, and I'm going to stop at a certain point. I need to explain two more things to you, and then you can either turn this off, or I will go back and uh, go through each of the worksheets and explain some things. So before you pause this, or you can pause it and then continue, I'm going to look at the word dissolve. And if you look at the word dissolve, most people will say it's a chemical change, but it's not. It's a physical change. Because if I have something that I dissolve, like sugar, and I dissolve it in water, or hot chocolate powder in milk, I can evaporate the milk and I can evaporate the water and I still have that substance. Think about when you go to the beach and you have water and the water's on you with salt and it evaporates. Well, you have salt on your skin. Same thing with a plant growing. A plant growing, people would say it's physical, but it's actually chemical. Because yes, even though the plant grows taller and it appears to change physically, why is it changing physically? It's growing because of photosynthesis, which is a chemical change, a chemical reaction. Now, with chemical changes, you need to know a sentence. Crazy gets never play tennis, okay? So yeah, there's words like cook and burn and fry and corrode, okay? Not dissolve, remember dissolve is physical, okay? Or, um, or grow, those are all chemical changes. But if you have a color change, that's the word crazy, a gas, a new substance, a precipitate, or a temperature change, then those are all signals of a, of a chemical change. Now color, what do I mean by color? That means if um, you have a nice shiny screwdriver and you put it outside in the rain, it turns a brown color. That's a color change. And yeah, even though you and I know that's gonna turn brown, you know that because of experience, but it wouldn't normally turn brown. There's no like brown coloring nearby. The brown uh, sprinkle fairy doesn't come by and sprinkle brown dust on it. Same thing with if I put blue Kool-Aid into water and it turns light blue. Yeah, that's a color change, but that's a physical change. You know that's gonna happen. But what if I put two clear substances together and they turn yellow? That's a color change. That's a chemical change. A gas baking soda and vinegar, okay? You know that's gonna happen, okay, because you've done that for a long time, but that gas being formed is a result of a chemical change. A new substance forming, like that rust, or like that gas forming, that's an, a chemical change. A precipitate, I showed you that in class. Um, and a temperature change, think about when you put those um, hot hands in your pocket in the wintertime, and you uh, you know, break it open and it produces heat. Or when you snap that package of the ice pack, you know, if you get hurt at a soccer game or something, that turns cold. Those are temperature changes that are a result of a chemical change. Okay, that's not like I, I burn something or I heat something up. It does it by itself. Okay, those are exothermic and endothermic reactions and those are chemical changes. So, Sorry, I'm not gonna like go through each of these as far as um, comparing the worksheet, but if you wanna listen, you can, okay? So if I look at elements, let me go through this by number. If I look at copper, and I look at sulfur, and I look at helium, and I look at 
aluminum. Those are all elements. They're on the periodic table. Okay? So what's a compound? This is uh, sodium bicarbonate is a compound. That's what baking soda is. You might not have known that. Number eight is table salt. What's table salt? NaCl. Okay? And that's non-iodized. It means there's no iodine in there, so it's just sodium chloride. That's a compound. And number 12, dry ice. Well, dry ice is solid carbon dioxide. It's really cold. And what about 15? Vitamin C is ascorbic acid. So that's also a compound. And you might not have known about ascorbic acid, and you might not have known about baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. But those are compounds, indeed. So now let's look at the remaining ones on the sheet homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures, all right? So things like, I'll use a highlighter for this, things like black coffee, there's nothing else in it but coffee and water, things like chocolate ice cream, there's just good old melted chocolate ice cream, things like ocean water, gulp, 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 yeah, it's salty, but it sure tastes the same to me from sip to sip. Those are homogeneous, they're the same in every section. What about heterogeneous? Well, that's things like what? Number four, mixed vegetables. I take a bite, and yeah, they're mixed vegetables, but they're different in every bite. Same thing with soil. There might be snails in one, rocks in another, different colors of soil and sand, okay? Um, what about number nine, Italian salad dressing? I might have a different amount of spices or oil or vinegar. And then number 14, which is a cheeseburger. In every bite, I might have a little more burger, a little more bun, a little more lettuce and tomato, okay? So moving on to this, physical and chemical changes and properties. A physical property are things like um, color. Mm, that's too thick. There you go. Nope, sorry, I'm trying to get in the seven. Here you go. So color, okay, or melting point, or boiling point, or freezing point. Um, things like conductivity, I can spell, conductivity. Um, and reading things off your sheet, they're things like, let's see, conductivity, Color, boiling point, melting point, malleability, ductility, luster, density, and phase. Those are all physical properties. Chemical properties are things that are, are things like rusting, or how it oxidizes, or how it reacts with a base, how it chemically changes. Okay, those are um, chemical changes. Okay, or chemical properties. So if you look, there's actually a mistake on this. And this right here should be a physical property, electrical conductivity. It tells how um, things can conduct electricity. Alrighty. Now what does intensive and extensive mean? Well, if you have mass, that's extensive. If you have length, that's extensive. And if you have volume, that's extensive. So mass, length, and volume. Those are all extensive properties. Anything else is intensive. It's in something. Like my hair is blonde. It's in that. If I have something that um, smells like odor, that's in something. That's um, how long something is. I can have two long silver wires. One is silver, one's aluminum. They look silver to you, but if I have a mile of each, that's an extensive property. It's external. It doesn't tell me what it is or how it acts. Okay? If I had a silver wire and an aluminum wire, I sure could get more money for the silver wire. It would act different. It would be different density, etc. Okay? So those are intensive and extensive properties. And physical changes and chemical changes, so there's things like snap, break, twist, all those. What else? Melt, freeze, evaporate, condense, 
what else? Dissolve, right? And things like chemical changes, well, we talked about that. Those are color, gas, new substance, precipitate, temperature change, corrode, cook, burn, fry, grow, remember, because of photosynthesis. So be careful. So all of these that are physical and chemical changes, um, I think they're pretty obvious. I don't think there's anything on here that is different, uh, that, that doesn't fit into what you know. Okay?